Hello my soccer universe for a Serie A review video outside of the Milan Derby. Yes, I'm still wearing Milan, I'm still super happy about that, but this will only be a side note, you will get probably the one minute video in my match review section. There were so many crazy things going on in Serie A outside of the big game. And the other big game that probably many people have been watching be uh, between Juve and Napoli was an absolute stinker, but everything else was actually really entertaining overall. So the Italian game is truly well and alive we have a super unusual top three Torino, Napoli, Udine, then Juve and then Empoli and only then they are the Milan teams and yes Atalanta still need to play their match against Como I was thinking of pushing this video to Wednesday but for scheduling reason it will not work out the game will be played in the evening but yesterday it was an absolutely waterlogged pitch it was a little fun to see how the referee tried to see if the ball bounces and then right at midfield plush and everything splashed around but since there's been so much happening, let's quickly get caught up with some news before we then go into reviews of the games. And then I will talk a little bit about the situation in Serie A after round five. On Wednesday, we also had the sad news of the hero of the 1990 World Cup, Toto Scalacci, the man that made this jersey famous, passing away at the age of 59 due to cancer. Toto Scalacci was one of the first stars growing up as a young fan. He probably had the most remarkable goal-scoring World Cup of any player, I would argue. Of his six goals, five of them made it 1-0 for Italy, five of them were game winners, and only in the semi-final Italy did not win at least I got a third place. And that was the highlight of his career. Afterwards, he didn't do anything. However, he had a remarkable season at Messina that got him a spot at Juventus that actually earned him the squad as in the Italy squad because they needed a striker that would not make a fuss. And he became the big star. Not your Mancinis, not your Vialis, not your Giannini's, and arguably also not your Bacios. So rest in peace, Toto Scalacci. Thanks for the memories. And always remember his celebration with the eyes coming out of his skull. In midweek Serie A news, Roma beat Milan to the first sacking of the season. Daniele De Rossi out after four games with three draws and one loss. And it doesn't make much sense, honestly. Yes, he fell victim to the caretaker coach that was successful, being awarded a new contract and then results went a little bit sideways. However, if you have signings coming in so late and you don't give your coach time to implement them into your squad, you have done a wrong job, Roma. This is all down to the club owners. And yes, coach Ivan Juric, I really valued what he did for Verona. His work at Torino was not that great. And now he's going to Roma. I am not sure how this will work, but it will truly be stuff where you have to say, get out your popcorn, because Juric is not for the faint of heart. As for Daniele De Rossi, I think he has good ideas in coaching and he was a breath of fresh air after Mourinho. I think there's a good coach in there. However, this will be now a dark stain on his resume and yeah, not liking that one. Outside of the derby, we had actually a very entertaining round in Serie A as well. We, for instance, have a new leader in Torino who went to Verona, beat them 3-2. However, that game was a real nail-biter for the fans of the Toro. Sanabria giving them the early lead. Castanos quickly equalizes. Then Davidovic is sent off for an elbow to the face. Sanabria takes the penalty, puts it on the post, and then converts the rebound. However, the goalie hadn't touched it, so it didn't count. 11 minutes later, after Lazaro cross Zapata heads in the go-ahead goal for Torino who at that time had full control of the game. However, Verona adjusted and actually worked them quite well, created more in the game whereas Torino was just sitting back and hoping to convert their chances. One of those they did then with Shea Adams who had come on a few minutes before making it 3-1 in the 79th minute. However, Mosquera in stoppage time pulls one back. Torino though hang on and are now top of the table despite me slamming them over the years that they never really convince. Maybe this is for once this season where Torino can actually do something and maybe qualify for Europe. Most importantly, win a derby for once. But Torino also lead us in the table because the leaders from the last round, Udinese, go to Rome and lose 3-0 against the Roma team where the club is in utter disarray after the sacking of Daniele De Rossi. So many things going on, so many protests. There was whistling even when Roma was 1-0 up at the half through a Dovbeek goal. Dybala with a penalty right after the half kind of settles the game towards Roma there was a great shot by Tovin in there Udinese really selling themselves hard but then I called out and Baldanzi makes it 3-0 calming maybe the storm in Rome I 
don't think so. This second for De Rossi will have consequences that we will feel longer on. Sporting director already stepped down because she got threatened by ultras. We also had Venezia's first win of the season, a 2 0 over Genoa. Buzio and Poyan Palo getting the goals in the second half. In the second half, also Poyan Palo misses a penalty, but much needed win. First win of the season, as I said, for Venezia. We also had Fiorentina beating Lazio at home 2 1 thanks to two Goodmundsen penalties. That was a game where I actually thought Lazio were slightly better. Overall, they had a deserved halftime lead through Gila in the 41st minute. However, you give away two stupid penalties, and especially the second one while you're pushing for the go ahead goal with Guendouzi hitting also the crossbar. It was also interesting for the first time for me that they're actually rebuilding the Artemio Franchi somehow. I'm really curious how this will work out. I have to look it up. Fiorentina deserve a better stadium. Local rivals Empoli also are in good form, getting the second win of the season, still unbeaten, going to Cagliari and beating them 2 0 with Colombo and Esposito scoring the two goals. And in one of the crazier games this weekend, we had Lecce share their spoils with Parma 2 2. However, this was looking all like Lecce. They had a 1 0 halftime lead, but then they go down a man as Gilbert is sent off in the 47th minute. However, Cancellari follows just 10 minutes later. Kristovic, right after that red card, extends the lead to two goals for Lecce, and you thought they're cruising in for a win. And then two stoppage time goals, 93rd and 95th minute through Almquist and Heino salvage a point for Parma. After the Champions League foray, Bologna get a win at Monza. A hard-fought win, I have to say, because Monza were well well in the game. Urbanski he, uh, scores the opener them with a sort of Maldini assist. Duric scores an equalizer right before the half. Mo both teams having chance. It was not a great game, though. Castro gets the winner in the 80th minute. And very much on purpose, I'm leaving the other top game for last. Juve against Napoli was a nil-nil stinker. It's the third nil-nil for Juve in a row. However, silver lining, you will still have yet to concede a goal. That's the only team in the top five leagues in Europe that have that record. But yeah, this game was an absolute stinker. We won! Yes! Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Milan could win a derby again after six losses. Milan won and the best thing, deservedly so. Started out really well. Pulisic takes a ball from Mkhitaryan, just darts towards the goal, and Pavard doesn't want to give away a penalty. It's an easy goal for Pulisic. However, then the game became more of a nil bite. Di Marco gets an equalizer after um, Lautaro dummies the entire defense, and everyone forgets about Di Marco at the back. It's an equalizer, and then a great Mignon save on Thuram. We just have to survive this half. Maybe we can get out with a draw. Actually, Milan were better. There was a Rafa Leao header. It was not placed very well. Then a huge Tammy Abraham chance. Lautaro had a great shot. Uh, it was saved by Mignon, and it's a free kick, Reinders in, and Gabia, and I'm so happy that it's a Milan youth player that wins the derby, heads it in in the 87th minute. Oh man, what a relief, and Milan should have made it 3-1. This is my only regret there. At the final whistle, I won! <laughs> yes, we won! As I've mentioned already in the opener, the Atalanta Como game got postponed due to a waterlogged pitch will be played today. You'll get my thoughts on this game in probably a short video tomorrow and then in the Serie A review video next week to kind of complete the whole round. But I think we have to start at Roma. I already mentioned it, they had the Rossi sacked. There are protests going on. Roma is a club completely in disarray. And unlike Milan, who stuck with Fonseca and were rewarded with a great win, Roma made this a change from De Rossi to Duric. And while I value Duric, I'm not sure how well this will work at Roma. And then the statement coming out from the Friedkins that this was the change to make sure that Roma will win a trophy this season. What trophy? I mean, the league is gone. The Coppa Italia is usually steep, maybe. Maybe the Europa League, is that what you're eyeing? Yeah, I mean, I guess that would be a proper trophy, but you know, the European record for Roma is not that great. Only Jose Mourinho managed a trophy for you, so that statement I did not find very well. What really annoys me is not that they sacked a club legend, but you sacked a club legend that you had just given a three-year contract. A club legend that you did not support early on in the window. All the signings came late. It reeks of incompetence. And then you make a statement that De Rossi is a good coach and maybe he can come back to Roma. He would be crazy to go back to you as an ownership, to be honest. I know that like Totti, De Rossi loves Roma so much that I'm sure he will return. 
but I'm not sure if he will return under this leadership. I also think that there's something for the Rossi there, but give him time. I mean, the Friedkins are US owners, but they act like Italian owners of old. And I don't like that. Give coaches time, you are rewarded. I mean, it might be an extreme example, but Milan could have sacked Angelotti after one or two seasons. They stuck with him and they were rewarded with the last great period. He built a team that then went on to win a league title and two Champions Leagues. Just saying. Sometimes you need to give coaches time. And I'm glad this second by De Rossi is not followed by a second for Fonseca. Yeah, thanks to him winning the derby, I'm not sure how it would have been otherwise. Speaking of giving time, I think you have to also give time to Thiago Motta at Juventus. I don't think that Juventus are anyway nervous. And, you know, having this great defensive record, six goals scored, zero conceded. I have now three nil nils in a row. Mm. <laughs> not sure. Yes, Juve have conceded a goal in the Champions League and there they got the win. But, yeah, I feel that the Juve train has been stalling a little bit. Similar to the Inter train, because at the start, of season Inter also looked like they were going all out I think Inzaghi was a little bit overthinking the derby talking too much about the derby already but you know I have not really mentioned much of the Inter perspective as well but the crazy thing about Serie A at the moment are the standings where we have Torino on top and I have been wanting Torino to be good for so long every time they play a derby I think this might be the time that they can win it I'm not sure if they will win the derby again but I think they are now sitting top of the table 11 points a really good start and I think this Torino team might be for real they might be the Bologna of this season and that is exciting. I'm not sure what to make of Udinese yet because they had a previous league also good starts and then kind of fell by the wayside. Empoli also very very sturdy on the back of their survival campaign last time around. Again we also have to see but it's really weird to see the two Milan teams and the two Roman teams all sitting between spot 6 and 9. Yes on 8, 8, 7 and 6 points respectively and while the positioning might not look pretty I can see them rising rather quickly if the schedule will allow so. I also think we have a real relegation dogfight on our hand. At the moment it's not clear who is really the worst team. I mean Cagliari seems like the one team that is out of sorts but they also seemed like that last season and then they got the big turnaround. I'm curious if Genoa, yes they lost also a few good players, if they can hang around or if it will be a relegation fight for them again. And lastly I also mentioned a little bit in the review I was surprised, but positively surprised to see that they are rebuilding the stadium in Florence. I read up a little bit, seemingly it's a protected stadium because of the architect, but I guess they can build something. They have to preserve the facade as far as I know, and this will take three years for at least one season. They can play in Florence, but at half capacity, if you would like. The stadium will be a little bit smaller, but it will be much posher and closer to the pitch. I haven't seen any plans, though. If you have that, please send me a link. I would love to see that. It is very likely that Fiorentina will have to play in Empoli and then the question is where will they play in Europe because there are not that many great stadiums around. Maybe they have to go to Bologna? That would be weird. But hey, the Dallara is one of those stadiums that I absolutely love to see even in the Champions League. Now with another Champions League round around the corner, we have the Champions League teams all playing early. Milan will host Lecce, boosted by the Derby. Lecce a little bit slammed by losing points to Parma. Let's see where this will be. Udinese against Inter. I think this is now an early top clash already and this is a ground that Inter always had a little bit of trouble. Same thing goes for Genoa and Juve. This is Juve's bogey team and then we have a duel between two unlucky Champions League teams in Bologna and Atalanta. Torino Lazio should be in your book as should be probably Empoli against Fiorentina I'm sure and let's see. Napoli can beat Monza. They should beat Monza. That much is for sure. So that was it from me from Serie A outside of the Milan Derby. Yes, there was a little bit in there. Just can't stop talking about it. This was a great win. It was a great Serie A round. It's a very exciting league, I gotta say. There's always enough drama in there. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I'll talk to you soon about more things in my Serie A universe. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.